Let's start off by opening up our control panel. We're going to navigate over to our voice routing, then we're going to click on voice policy. Your voice policies are configurable at different layers or levels. We have our global policy by default, but we can define policies at the site or the user level. So if we want to create a policy for Mesa, here we go to site, and then we choose our site called Mesa. We'll click on OK, and here we see the properties for our voice policy. The site policy will inherit the name of the site. We can provide a description, but that's optional. And then we have our calling features. Can our users use call forwarding? Can they use the feature called delegation, where they can set up delegates? We can allow users to transfer calls. We can also enable call park, which is kind of like putting a call on hold, but the call gets transferred over to a temporary extension, ping up your phone line. We can enable simultaneous ringing of phones, so a call coming in can ring on multiple endpoints. Team call allows calls to get surfaced by the defined members of a team. PST and reroute allows calls that are getting prevented from going through because of call emission control to get rerouted across another media through your PSTN connections. We can also prevent incoming calls from getting blocked due to call admission control by enabling bandwidth policy override. Malicious call tracing allows a user to mark a call as being malicious, putting an entry inside of the call detail records database so that the administrators can take further action. Next, we'll define our associated PSTN usages, which will control where the users can call to. So here, we're going to call this one Mesa Local Calling, and then we'll see that we have to define the associated routes that dictate where you can call to based off of a pattern to match. So here you can see the property sheet for it, but we're not going to configure this now. We're going to define our routes on the Route tab, and you'll see the results show up here. And then we'll come back here and see that it gets configured for us. To allow users to dial long distance or internationally, we're going to create user-level policies to accommodate these. So here I'm going to create a policy that allows users to dial long distance. Keep in mind that you have to associate these policies with the users afterwards. So here we have our calling features. And then down at the bottom of the console with our associated PSTN usages, we're going to select the local dialing so these users can dial locally. But then we're going to create another PSTN usage record, and this one here will allow long distance calling. But again, keep in mind that we still have to create the associated routes and apply them to the policy which you can create here inside of the console, or as we're going to do, we're going to define our routes and associate them with the PSTN usages. Here we'll click on OK, click on OK again. Some of our top level executives are going to have to be able to dial internationally, so we're going to create a user level policy for these individuals. We'll go to user policy, we'll provide a name for the policy. When we go down to our associated PSTN usage records, we're going to associate the MESA local and the MESA long distance dialing. We're also going to create another PSTN usages record that allows international calling. So here we'll define the name MESA International, and then we're going to have to define the associated routes that apply to this PSTN usage record, the route that will define the international dialing. When a user configures call forwarding or simultaneous ringing of endpoints, where the call can get forwarded to or where the dialed call can ring will be limited based upon your configured PSTN usages records based upon your voice policy. Instead of routing using the call PSTN usages, we can also choose to restrict your call forwarding or simultaneous ringing to internal link users only. We can also allow call forwarding and simultaneous ringing of PSTN usages to be able to route calls based upon the settings of a different PSTN usages policy. Let's click on OK and then go take a look at configuring routes. To define a route, we're going to click on our Route tab. We'll navigate down to New. Then we have to provide a name for our route. A route is defined by a build pattern to match. So you'll notice down below where it says Build a pattern to match starting digits for numbers that you want to allow, and this is where we define the match patterns, and you can define more than one. So for local MESA calling, we're going to use plus 1408, click on Add. If you want to define exceptions, you click on Exceptions, and you can define them here inside of the console. We'll click on OK. We'll scroll down just a little bit further, and you'll see where I have matched this pattern, and if you click on Edit, you can type in your regular expression freeform. We'll click on OK. We also have an option to suppress caller identification and also to provide an alternate caller ID if required. Next, we have to define the associated trunks, which, as you remember, links your pool over to the gateways. 
So here we're going to use a couple of different gateways over in Mesa and the product can round robin between them. So it provides us a higher level of availability. Our next step is that we have to define the PSTN usages records that this route is associated with. So this will be linked to Mesa local calling. We'll click on OK and then click on OK again. Next we'll switch over to our action drop down menu choice. And you'll see that we have options for importing and exporting the route configuration. Let's click on commit. We'll go down to Commit All. Once we've committed our changes, they're going to be published over to our database. Now that we have a PSTN usage record, let's go back to our voice policies and open up our MESA policy, which allows local calling. We'll go down to our MESA local calling PSTN usages, and you can see that we now have that associated route called MESA local calling. Now if we go to the properties for it, you can see that we have our pattern to match and the associated trunks. Here we're going to click on OK. We'll go over to our route configuration tab. As you can see, we only have one route configured for local calling, so we have our work cut out for us. We still have to create a bunch of other routes and associate them with the appropriate PSTN usages. On the PSTN usage tab, we're going to navigate down and take a look at the properties for the PSTN usage that we created called Mesa Local Calling. When I open it up, you can see that I have my associated routes. So there we have one route, kind of like a backlink. I also have the voice policies that it's associated with. You can see that this route is associated with my site and my two user policies. We'll close out of there. Next, we're going to take a look at our trunk configuration from inside of the control panel. A trunk configuration defines settings for interoperability with our gateways. And the settings can be applied globally at the site and down to the pool level. We're going to create a site trunk. And here we choose our site called Mesa and click on OK. As you can see, we have a lot of configurable settings. Let's take a look at some of the important settings, such as encryption level. Is it required, optional, or not supported by the hardware that we're communicating with? This controls whether we use secure real-time transport protocol or just real-time transport protocol. Next, we see the options for SIP referrals, which are used when we transfer calls. We can define if our gateway supports media bypass. We have a configuration setting to enable outbound routing failover timer for fast trunk failover in your environment for routing of your calls. To enable inter-trunk routing, we can associate and configure PSTN usage records to the trunk configuration. The PSTN usages associated to the trunk configuration will get applied to all of the incoming calls through the trunk environment that aren't originating from a Microsoft Link endpoint. We're not setting up inter-trunk routing, so we'll just scroll down. Underneath the associated translation rules, we have calling number translation rules and called number translation rules. And in the properties, we define a pattern to match and we can define digits to remove or digits to add. So for example, if I want to take an E.164 formatted number and strip off that plus symbol before I pass the call to my gateway. This provides less configuration over on our gateways and also provides more compatibility with our vendors. When I open up the properties for the called number translation rule, as you can see, it looks the same. And if I use the edit option down at the bottom of the console, I can type in a regular expression with free form. Let's click on edit. We'll cancel out of there. Next, we're going to close out of our trunk configuration window, and we'll click on OK. When you're done configuring the settings for your trunk, if you want those settings to stick, you would have to commit the changes. We're not done configuring enterprise voice yet. We still have to define our pin policies and enable our users for enterprise voice. 